directly the s of f you know for cos signal fourier transform everything na varu you will get two impulses you will get two impulses that uh, I, i will write directly ac by 2 del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc please refer your basics okay if you take the fourier transform for cos signal enna pannalam cos e power la edalam again adukku fourier transform eduthingina edhu pola varum in terms of del similarly uh, for this also we can write fourier series that is ac mu by 4 uh sorry ac mu by 4 del of del of 1 is f minus fc plus fm mm, plus del of f plus fc plus fm you will get this for the second signal similarly for the third signal also we have to write the fourier transform for for fourth signal again ac mu by 4 del of f minus fc minus fm plus del of f plus fc minus fm this is the fourier transform of the modulated signal fourier transform of the modulated signal okay so this uh, fourier transform representation may looks somewhat difficult okay no problem but uh, th this is the actually the spectrum of the am signal so now we can easily draw the spectrum of the am signal say this is zero uh, now we will have spectrum on both side so both uh, right side as well as the left side but mostly we will concentrate only on the positive frequencies we will concentrate only on the positive frequencies that means uh, this will come in the positive side f minus fc means f is equal to fc f is equal to fc that means uh, in the carrier we will have some spectrum with a spectrum with the amplitude of ac by 2 then we will have another spectrum at uh, fc plus fm with uh, ac mu ac mu by 4 this is ac mu by 4 again there will be another spectrum with the fc minus fm uh, with the amplitude of ac mu by 4 now i am representing the signal in the frequency domain now this is in the frequency domain so when it is in the frequency domain what is the representation s yes of f okay it is s of f okay s of t ne define mano adik fourier transform edutha s of f okay, frequency domain frequency spectrum frequency spectrum of am so why we are writing frequency spectrum you know over end or signal la irundal after modulation we want to find out what is the bandwidth what is the bandwidth of the signal so bandwidth means by definition we know ang irukiradile edu larger frequency minus smaller frequency that is the bandwidth that is the bandwidth so okay, bandwidth kandupidina definitely we have to write the spectrum directly we can remember the formula but we should know what is the spectrum of the signal sometimes spectra the base panni questions vandu kekalam so, so, so bandwidth means um, highest frequency minus lowest frequency so in this system so only i am concentrating on the positive frequency the same thing you will get it on the negative also that also i will write see on fc also you will get same spectrum minus fc again minus fc plus fm then minus fc minus fm but mostly we will concentrate only on the positive side positive frequencies because in the real time we, will, we are having only positive frequencies but for analysis purpose we will write negative frequency also but practically we will consider only positive frequencies so now what is the bandwidth so upper cut off frequency minus lower cut off frequency that is fc plus fm is the highest frequency and then what is the lowest frequency that is fc minus fm so finally i am getting 2 fm as a bandwidth so this is the bandwidth of the am signal this is the bandwidth of the am signal so now we are considering only single tone okay single tone in reality the message signal may have multiple frequencies okay that is multi tone modulation that is multi tone modulation 
so if it is a single tone directly we can write 2 into fm suppose in case if the message signal is having message signal is multi tone if it is having many number of frequency then we have to write like 2w 2w okay w means say sometime the message signal will be represented like this 0 to w so that means what it is consist of all frequencies from 0 to w all the intermediate frequency but i will take only is to frequency is to message frequency okay this is the message signal in 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 real time usually the message signal will occupy all the frequencies will occupy all the frequencies so generally it will be given like this even though it is consist of many frequencies we will take only i frequencies we will take only i frequencies you know once i frequency kandupidichitinga na meedi ellame adukulla dhaan varum low frequencies la pottinga na idukulla dhaan varum i frequency kulla dhaan varano adanal so otherwise you can also remember like this two times of highest frequency in the message two times of highest frequency in the message highest frequency in the message okay am modulation band with na nadu two times of fm or two times of highest frequency in the message signal okay so now quickly we will calculate the power of the signal okay for finding out the power uh, we must have the equation in the time domain okay this is the time domain equation you know for sinusoidal signal how to calculate the power for sinusoidal signal simply rms value you have to find out the rms value then uh, just the square of the rms value will give the power of the signal okay so again the power of the signal is independent of frequency that is another important note note power of the sinusoidal signal is independent of the frequency power of sinusoidal signal power of sinusoidal signal is independent of frequency independent of frequency but usually it depends on the amplitude power nale amplitude mattum da depend panirukku because yen solrom appadina there are three different component one is frequency fc and another one is fc plus fm again you should not get confused enna frequency adhigama irukna adukku vera power varuma appadina confuse aagura that's why i am giving that note okay power is always independent of the frequency it depends on only amplitude so now ac is the carrier amplitude okay first uh, will the power total power total power is the sum of carrier power and then upper side band power and then lower side band power so carrier power means generally what is the power formula either it is i square r i square it not simple i square i rms i rms means effective current okay whenever we have sinusoidal signal instead of simply writing i we will write i rms effective signal so i rms sorry i effective okay or otherwise we will write v rms square divided by r again for simplicity in the communication system we will assume that r is always 1 ohm in reality we may have r as a some value but for uh, simplicity we will assume that r is 1 so that means here i have to write only v rms square that means rms value square so the carrier amplitude is ac what is the rms value of ac that is ac divided by root 2 for sinusoidal signal rms value is simply amplitude divided by root 2 then i have to do the square i have to do the square then what is the amplitude of upper side band just you see here amplitude here is ac mu by 2 ac mu by 2 so ac mu by 2 again rms means again 1 by root 2 whole square again for lower side band also ac mu divided by 2 root 2 whole square now what is the final answer ac square by 2 okay ac square mu square okay 8 ac square mu square divided by 8 now if you add everything ac square you can take it outside uh, or otherwise ac square by 2 you can take outside then you will get uh, ac square by 4 ac square by 4 I think you can write like one plus mu square divided by two, just mathematical simplification. Now, uh, total power P T is equal to A C square by two plus one plus mu square by two. So from this you can write A C square by two is indicating the power of the carrier. So I can replace this with the P C. So this is P C mu square divided by two is the final answer. So this is the important conclusion. pt total power for am system is carrier power multiplied with 
1 plus mu square divided by 2. 1 plus mu square divided by 2. Now we can make some of the important observation here. Now what will happen if I take mu is equal to 0? Anyway, we have arrived at the important formula. Most of the time, either in the gate or in any exam, you will be getting question based on this. Once if you know this question, you can easily remember all other power formulas. That means power formula for double sideband suppressed carrier and then power formula for single sideband suppressed carrier easier on the Navo Chila. So now we will have some intuitive understanding from this formula. Suppose what will happen if I take mu is equal to zero, if mu is zero, PT is equal to PZ. So that means what is actually happening? If if I'm taking mu is equal to zero, what is happening? What we have defined mu is equal to AM divided by AC. Mu is equal to zero means what? AM is zero. AM zero means there is no message signal. If there is no message signal, only carrier will be there and the total power only carrier will be going from transmitter to the receiver that, that also getting reflected on the power side so only if am is zero there is no modulation there is no there is no message signal only carrier will go from transmitter to the receiver and suppose what if i take mu is equal to one in some exam they'll ask uh, if modulation index is one what will happen what is the total power the total power is 1.5 times of pc if mu is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 by 2, that is 1.5, 1.5 times of PC. That means the carrier power is getting increased by 50 percentage. Already PC, see that what I can write here, this is PC and then 50 percentage of PC. So they will give the statement when mu is 1, the carrier power is increased by 50 percentage. When mu is 1, what is happening? Carrier power is increased total power or more than now the carrier power is increased by 50 percentage so it's one statement but ultimately you have to remember this power total power formula total power 